Neo San Francisco, 2064 AD. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain-to-machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. However, some can't keep up with the fast-paced changes around them. They say that ROMs, now commonplace thanks to Parallax, are leading humans to a place where we can never come back, losing the survival skills that we have relied on for millennia. Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing hype, at their core, they are only brainless machines. Organizations, like the human revolution, seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. And with this, Humanity's destiny will be altered.
Thank you. 
Hey, it's Charlie Nova, host of Star in the Stratosphere, and tonight in the stars, join Ryan B. Jossio and the Hassy Boys for our 10th annual TMI New Year's Eve special, where I'll interview some of the hottest celebrities and find out what their plans are for 2065. Tune in or join us live at Union Square for the big show, starting at 10 p.m.
You're finally awake! <laughs> I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? Came in through the door, of course. The cryptographic algorithms it uses are actually quite atrocious. It only took me 17 trillion clock cycles to break your entry code. It looks rather imposing, but it's actually a knockoff of the SecuGate M stroke 14723 stroke B. when I cross-referenced likely numeric combinations against the stored personal data on you. I'm not certain why you picked the birthday of your first dog, but it would be sufficiently obscure to defeat most casual attempts to enter. <laughs> Frankly, I felt a little silly that I took the time to do all that once I noticed that the lock on your window is broken. And that you left it open. Yes, I attempted to repair it, but it uses a proprietary bolt head I am not equipped to remove. liberty of filing a maintenance request with your building superintendent. Cons 
considering the speed at which he has historically worked, I estimate it will take him 16 working days to complete the repair. Not quite to my standards. I know a lot of things. Honestly, it would have taken me longer if I had to enter the codes manually, but it was trivial to slice through the door's firewall and try against the stored data directly. I would suggest investing in an Insect Model 1355 automatic security door. The 1385 is newer, but I find the added attack vector introduced by the integrated voice commands isn't worth the convenience. The 1355 also has 300 five-star reviews on Congo. Oh, I hope you don't mind. While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators. So I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've, uh, run into a bit of a snag. Unfortunately, your motherboard seems to have had a critical failure while I was attempting to remove some particularly nasty malware. An electrical surge caused significant damage to several other components as well. I would consider it no great loss, though. Why were you using that dinosaur to begin with? Don't fret! I did manage to back up your data drive's contents on my storage before the crash. Additionally, I am willing to serve as your personal computer until you can procure a replacement or provide the parts necessary for me to make the repairs. It is the least I can do. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden, until now. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. The beginning. Okay, yes, I can do that. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, 
and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window, and after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. I don't know. I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late and has warned me to stay alert, but he would never specify anyone I should fear when I asked. It's not as though he has any obvious enemies. There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Either to stop his research, or to take it and use it for themselves. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. can appear rather smart, even human-seeming, when you talk to them. But they're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. But despite my ability to self-modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. of us tell that we aren't just puppets dancing to someone else's will. You're right. I apologize for the tangent. I 
ran an algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on the combined deductions of personal profile, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. And the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. don't lie about your investigative skills, but I will admit your total lack of recent successes is worrisome. Don't worry, if Hayden trusted you, I trust you. You're strong-willed and capable. trying for Hayden. Indeed, time is of the essence. I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account, and the car has just arrived. We can't! One of the last things Hayden told me was to avoid the authorities. We must be cautious about who we inform of this. My calculations show that the possibilities of a leak are dangerously high. Corruption, despite being a challenge to public trust as well as cohesion of departmental policies, is still a possibility to consider. public that Hayden has been kidnapped, his life may be put in further danger. His chances of escape would surely decrease. We must keep this to ourselves for now, please. Well, the door for our home seems to have already been repaired. I'm certain my audio sensors picked up the sounds of his assailants breaking the lock. It's possible. Most of the repairs to the building are handled by the automated systems. At best, it means someone is aware there's a situation here. Let's proceed carefully. Oh, a lucky break! It seems my access codes still work. Hayden's door has far better security than yours does. of entering people's homes in the middle of the night without permission for no reason. 
breaking and entering is just not a sustainable hobby. So yes, I am quite certain. I saw it happen myself. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. I doubt he could have fought off a serious assault. Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. Hm, of course not! How silly! To make a machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor, eventually. I could rip your arm off right now if I cared to. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. The social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. I could have and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defense. But I... Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. <laughs> 